Finnick on the Fox. Wrapping up the workforce. It's time to go home. Hey, this is Jeff Play from the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Hey, it's 5 o'clock, and it's time to go home. Oh, my God, it's him! Shut up! <laughs> this is the Punch-Out Party. Finnick on the Fox. <laughs> on the Fox, get you into the weekend. Fox Rock weekend in full swing. Uh, Jimothy is in here. I told you you could stand in here, but you have to go stand in the corner. I don't you're, know if I can. I'm so excited. You're way too excited. Would you please relax? No. Oh, my God. No. Go stand in the no, corner. No, I can't. No. Go stand in the corner, no, Jimothy. I, uh, I want everyone to say hello to my friend, uh, my new friend, Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Jeff Plate. Oh, my God, Jeff. Shut up, Jimothy. Jeff, how are you? I'm doing great, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. Hey, man, it's such a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, I tell you, your music has just resonated through the years and, uh, and and generations alike. I'm telling you what, my dad, I love it. My kids love it. Uh, you guys have really created something uh, unique, as we call uh, the, the rock theater. This is something that uh, Paul O'Neill, our, our creator, our producer, our mastermind, mm -hmm. and he envisioned this. He wanted to create a show for, for everyone. And as you just mentioned, you know, if you come to our show, you're going to find every age group, every every lifestyle, every uh, every genre of music we basically cover on the stage and throughout the course of our show. And you know, his whole idea was was to bring something to the stage that people could enter that arena and lose themselves for two or three hours and just be completely entertained. He uh, he has certainly succeeded in doing this, and uh, here we are, 19 years later. We have another tour coming out this year, and uh, things things look really good for us. Now, I want to talk about uh, Paul, of course. He founded the group uh, in 1996, a year I graduated. You were a part of that from the beginning, uh, but but a lot of TSO came from Sabotage. Now, tell us a little bit about Sabotage and, and the big difference between that and Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Well, it's interesting. Paul O'Neill started working with Sabotage in 1986. He, he came aboard for the uh, Hall of the Mountain King record. And he immediately found a real, you know, connection between himself and, and John and Chris Oliva. So they became quite a team. And, you know, Paul, at the time, he had his sights on doing something a little more progressive, you know, trying to integrate some classical themes into some of these songs. And, and at the time, Sabotage was really a heavy metal band. Right. And Paul, something in this group, he saw something in these, in these brothers that... He believed that there was more there, and he was really, you know, working with them on trying to bring that out. So, if you listen to some of the older Sabotage stuff, especially some songs from the Gutter Ballet record, you will hear the early, the early makings of TSO. You know, Paul was was starting to introduce, you know, some counterpoint vocals. He had orchestration. He was turning the band into more of a progressive metal band. So, as time progressed, um, John Oliva decided to step down. And they hired a new singer named Zach Stevens. Um, Zach is somebody that I had worked with in Boston, and that was how I came into being into the band. But when John Oliva stepped away from Sabotage, one of the main reasons was him and Paul were beginning to work a lot on some Broadway musicals. So this whole thing was kind of all happening and being thought about, and Paul hadn't quite... You know, he was doing kind of two things at once, and it hadn't really come together yet. But when Sabotage did the Dead Winter Dead record, Christmas Eve, Sarajevo 1224 was an instrumental that, that Paul placed in this record. And when that song came out, that song became the vehicle for TSO. And that song in particular has, uh, it took off in a completely different direction than, than what was Sabotage. And... At that point, Paul realized he had what he needed to actually create the Trans-Siberian Orchestra and put all his thoughts and this whole vision of his into play. And here we are, you know, 1996 was our first TSO CD, Christmas Eve and Other Stories, which was hugely successful. 1999 was our first tour, and here we are all these years later, and, and, and things are still going strong. Yeah, you are stronger than ever! Shut up, Jimothy! I want to ask a question! More with Jeff Plate from Trans-Siberian Orchestra coming up on 103.9 The Fox. Join 103.9 The Fox. Take me home tonight on 103.9 The Fox. Please, classic rock authority off the album Can't Hold Back. It's uh, Fennec on The Fox and Jimothy over there in the corner. He can't hold back. I'm going to continue my interview now uh, with Jeff Plate from Trans-Siberian Orchestra, assuming... You promise you can stay under control back there? Yes, I'll be good. All right, Jeff, now let me ask you about this. 9.5 million CDs later, 
13 million fans that you've been uh, performed in front of since 1999. Now, from your point of view, uh, and even going back as far as Sabotage goes, what's the big difference that you're seeing in the music industry versus when you started and today? Uh, I think live performance and... The record industry seems to be kind of upside down from what it used to be. You know, mm -hmm. now record sales really, really are not the way that bands generate income anymore because it's a digital world. And I mean, let's face it: when you when a CD is released anymore, it is pirated, it is downloaded, it is stolen. It's you know all of the above. You really can't make the money back on CDs. So live performance has really become where you know where a lot of bands make their way in this business anymore. Paul knew this. I mean, he saw this coming. And TSO was, I mean, granted, Paul was a huge fan of Pink Floyd. He was a huge fan of Aerosmith and The Who. And, you know, seeing these bands live, it just, you know, completely blew him away. But he wanted to bring that, all those elements to the stage and more. Give the fans something that they've never seen before. You know, completely, completely, you know, mesmerize them with production with talent with all of the above and you know i, I have to say that that paul worked endlessly with production just to try to put as much as he could on the stage at any given time at any given tour to make this all happen and to me a live performance is you know it's it's priceless you now when you go see a band everybody's got their cell phone out everybody's recording this recording that you better be good because <laughs> if you're not it's going to be broadcast worldwide instantly so this is something that we've all taken you know very seriously and worked very hard at getting on stage and perfecting what we do and just trying to bring the best show possible and to tell you the truth i mean watching a video of a really cool stage show is one thing but you really need to experience it yourself and of course that's that's why uh, you guys have been thriving for all these years of course uh uh, with, with the passing of Paul, you guys are going to keep that spirit alive with those uh, spectacular stage shows. But uh, in addition uh, to Paul, sadly, you also lost uh, Dave Z this year in July. Yes, two, uh, two tragic losses. Um, you know, the loss of Paul was is huge. And obviously when this happened, it was just, you know, it just took the wind out of you. And, you know, first and foremost, his, his wife and his daughter, you know, in our thoughts all the time. They, mm -hmm. They've been on this journey with Paul from, from the first note. So it took everybody a little while just to catch our breath and, you know, get our emotions in check and really think about what the future was going to be. And, you know, out of respect for Paul and, you know, here, here again, you know, his family knew that this was Paul's life work. This was his dream. He has accomplished more than you know we could ever have imagined tso is very important to a lot of people and not just for myself and the, the people that work during the tour but it is connected with so many millions of people in our audience that you know we just they felt it was really necessary to carry this on and I mentioned before paul has he's done everything he's, he's produced he's written all the lyrics all the stories the production the, the lighting schemes everything was paul We've learned so much from him, and now it's our our chance to take the torch and and carry on. And you know, and unfortunately, we're going to have to do this without Dave Z also, which was, you know, he's such a talented guy. He, he had been with TSO for for so many years, a fan favorite, nicest guy in the world, and one of the best musicians and performers I've ever had the, the pleasure of working with. So, you know, these things in life happen, and. Is there seems to be no rhyme or reason to it, but when they do, you really have to, uh, you know, pick up the pieces and carry on, and, and we will do that uh, in respect to both Paul and Dave this year. It's gonna, it has made myself more determined to be as good as possible. But I know the whole organization right now is, you know, we've got a whole new focus, and this this really has. Uh, changed a lot of us, but I, I think that we're going to be fine. You'll be totally what fine. What did I tell you about I talking? Don't talk to our guest. 
Jeff Plate, I do apologize for that. More uh, with stop it. More with Jeff Plate from Trans Siberian Orchestra. Their brand new tour, The Ghost of Christmas Eve. Tickets are on sale today. Get them now and more I with. Got mine. Shut up, Timothy. More with Jeff Play coming up on 103.9 The Fox. It's Finnick on the Fox. Johnny Burke in the morning. Win Workday Cash on 103.9 The Fox. Molly Hatchett flirting with disaster. Finnick on the Fox. Getting you home with the punch out party on a Friday. And our guest today, Jeff Plate from Trans Siberian Orchestra. Flirting with a Jeff Plate. Uh, you are. This is why you're in the corner, Jimothy. Uh, Shut up and, and just say, will you stay there? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, tickets on sale right now for the new winter tour, The Ghosts of Christmas Eve. And uh, we were talking about what a rough year it's been so far. Of course, uh, the loss of Paul O'Neill. And also in July, the loss of Dave Z. So on a personal level, yeah, it's difficult to deal with. We were talking about that. But as a band, you're going to have to do some adjusting, some some tweaking. And that's quite the task. But it's a task that I think you guys are up for. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, TSO... TSO is, is, is quite a is quite a machine. It's uh, we've had a lot of great people in and out, you know, come through the doors and, and move on for whatever reason or another. And and unfortunately, this is the case with this. It's uh, it's not under the circumstances that we would like, but this is you know it, this is part of the gig. We we have to uh, we got to fill in the, the spots and we got to pick up and you know some of us are going to have to do more than than we used to do. So. I think we're all up to the challenge, like I said. But uh, as far as Dave, you know, this this show is going to be it's going to be a lot different without him. But he's going to be with us in spirit. Absolutely. So uh, you guys have the honor of uh, being part of the brand new season at uh, Little Caesars Arena. It still has that brand new arena smell. Uh, so what is it like performing uh, at a, at a new arena versus uh, one that's been around for thirty years? Um, just just checking out the new technology and. and you know, all these buildings now, all these new arenas that, that we come into are, are really very, very cool. I mean, not only do they look great, but the accommodations, the the staging, the, 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 the video panels, you know, everything that's in the room, it's all really quite an advancement for what it used to be years ago. So I, I was actually talking to somebody earlier that told me this arena is fantastic. It's, uh, it's going to be different not playing at the palace you know we've, we've been doing that arena now for a number of years and i actually had the pleasure of playing in uh joe Lu lewis arena last year oh there you go um, i think i was i was touring with the band metal church and we were opening up for megadeth and i think we were one of the last shows that played that arena so <laughs> so it'll be interesting going from the old to the new but uh regardless we're we're certainly looking forward to it do you get sentimental like when you you play in an arena like like the Joe or the, or the Palace and knowing you know hey this is this is the last show here does it does it kind of tug at your heartstrings a little bit or is it yeah it's another arena? Well, no, it did because I mean I'm also a, a huge hockey fan. I've, I've watched I don't know how many I have never seen a game there, but I've seen it on television so many times. Right. The Red Wings were on such a tear for you know a number of years there, but. But I took the time to walk around that arena and really try to soak it in because, I mean, those are classics. You're not gonna you're not gonna find places like that very much around this country anymore. And it was really nostalgic just to walk through the arena, look at all the you know all the Stanley Cup uh, dates on the wall, the pictures, everything like that. It's it's very cool. But nonetheless, you know, these days arenas need to be. It, it, they need to modernize just to accommodate certain shows. And, you know, trans Siberian Orchestra, we, we show up with 20 tractor trailers full of lighting and sound. Wow. And some of, <laughs> some of these old arenas don't really have the, the loading docks or the accessibility to get these shows in and out, you know, efficiently. So, yeah, unfortunately, it's, it's always sad to see these old arenas go. But you know what? The, the new tradition starts this year for us at the Little Caesar Arena, and we're looking forward to it. Very cool. Uh, so do you want to play a silly, fun game? Sure. <laughs> All right. What time is it? 420. Do you think that smoking drugs is cool? It's Just Bob's 420 Contest. Uh, it's uh, Just Bob's 420 Contest. I know you grew up on a farm, so with no prior warning or nothing like that, Jeff Plate, I need you to name the four worst farm animals there are in 20 seconds. Go! <laughs> Pig. One. Chicken. Two. Goose. Three. Um... Pig. I 
<laughs> oh, Jeff, hey, uh, congratulations on the tour, the, the Winter Tour 2017, presented by the Hallmark Channel. Uh, tickets going on sale today, and uh, I love this, the Ghosts of Christmas Eve. This is actually based on your PBS fundraiser. Yeah, this was... Uh this is a special we recorded back in 1999, which was the first year that we actually went on tour. But uh, this special has, you know, it, it's gotten some real, it's, it's a fan favorite. And, and it's been broadcast every year on a number of different channels. This year you can find it on PBS and the Hallmark Channel. But we decided to come out with the show two years ago. Paul wanted to try this. And we put the show together. He had the, the songs all arranged, put in order for it. This became one of... His favorite shows, the the band, the cast, all loved performing the show, and and it has become an audience favorite. And you know, here again, last year was our 18th year of touring, and it was our most successful tour to date. So this presentation of this show has a lot to do with that. But you know, along with everything else we've been able to do over the years, the, the support of the fans has been tremendous. And, we're very proud. We're very thankful. Looking forward to it. Two shows at Little Caesars Arena on December 23rd. Tickets on sale today. Jeff Plate, appreciate you so much uh, spending some time with us this afternoon. You bet, man. Thanks for having me. This, this is Fennec on the Fox.